good evening welcome to cdp network if i am audible please let me know in chat i am audible yes okay thanks so guys today we are going to learn switching technology how switch is going to forward traffic okay so okay let's start let me share my screen hope my screen is visible switching topic for the day is switching so first of all what is switching switching means switching is a switching is a process of for forwarding data frame from one pc to another pc right so basically guys the device who is going to perform switching is switch it switch earlier we were using hub but nowadays we are not using hub nowadays we are using switch right so first of all if anyone is thinking how switch look likes so let me show you so you can see these are switches <clears throat> this is switch right you can see there are multiple ports so we can connect and devices like computers printer and any other and devices through this switch okay so let's say i need to design one network of some computers i have some computer in my office and i need to connect those computer together right how i will connect i will purchase one centralized device that is switch from the market because you know you can connect two computer together directly through one cable but you cannot connect three computer together through one cable because each computer have only one port right this computer have one port this computer have also one port and this computer have also one lan port right so either we can connect computer one computer two together or i can connect computer you know this computer and this computer together or i can connect this computer and this computer together i can not connect these three computer together right so to connect these three computer together i need one centralized device that is switch so now here i have one switch so now we can connect multiple computer together like we can connect this pc with this port this pc with this port this pc with this port and this pc with let's say this port like this right now question is how switch is going to forward traffic of one pc to other let's say this is pc a pc a pc b pc c and pc d so if pc a want to communicate with pc b how switch will process the traffic how switch will receive the traffic from pc1 and how switch will forward the traffic to pc2 that you need to learn okay so like you know router maintain routing table to forward traffic switch maintain mac address table to forward traffic switch maintain mac address table mac address table and first you need to understand how switch is going to build their mac address table how switch is going to build their mac address table so let me tell you how switch is going to build their mac address table let's say i have one switch here this is switch on this switch we have some port this port this port this port and let's say this port four ports are there okay and i can connect computer now computer a computer b computer c and let's say computer d this port is my 0/1 port 
this port is my 0 slash 2 port this port is my 0 slash 3 port and this port is my 0 slash 4 port let's say right this is pc a pc1 whose mac address is let's say a this is mac address of pc a one mac address of pc2 is b mac address of pc C is 3 is c and mac address of pc4 is d ip address of let's say this pc is 10.1.1.1 ip address of this pc is 10.1.1.2 ip address of this pc is let's say 10. 1.1.3 and IP address of this machine is let's say 10.1.1.4 right so as I told you this is switch switch maintain MAC address table switch maintain MAC address table so let's say this is MAC address table of this switch this is MAC address table of this switch MAC address table okay so when 10.1 let's say want to communicate with 10.2 or 10.4 10.1 want to communicate with 10.4 so source ip will be 10.1.1.1 in the packet destination ip will be 10.1.1.4 in the packet source mac will be a mac address of pc1 and destination mac will be d mac address of 10.4 right pc this pc will generate this traffic after that it will forward to switch this pc will forward this traffic to switch now all switch will receive this traffic on 0 slash 1 port see guys try to understand first function of switch very carefully when switch will receive this traffic on 0 slash 1 port first of all switch will learn source mac address first function of switch is learning mac address source mac address learning source mac address so on switch will receive traffic on 0 slash 1 port it will make one entry in their mac address table that i am receiving a traffic on 0 slash 1 port right and the device who is connected on 0 slash 1 port whose mac address is nothing but a a is the source mac address in the traffic in the frame source mac is a that means device which is connected on this interface mac address is a what is the mac address of device which is connected on 0 slash 1 port is a why because i am receiving a frame where source mac is a means this frame is coming from device whose mac address is a whose mac address is a so this switch will learn a mac address on 0 slash 1 port this is first fun function of switch learning source mac address so switch will make one entry in their mac address table that one device is connected on 0 slash 1 port whose mac address is a whose mac address is a after that there will be some more information also like vlan information will be there this interface is in vlan one and how switch have learned this mac address static or dynamic right so method will be there so now i am focusing only this two information interface and mac address right so what i said whenever a switch receive frame first of all switch will learn source mac address it will make one entry in their mac address table after that switch will check what destination mac address so what is destination mac address in the frame d right again switch will look up their mac address table to find what is the exit interface for d mac address means actually this switch try to you know find exit interface interface where a device is connected whose mac address is d switch is trying to find the interface where device is connected whose mac address is d where is the computer whose mac address is d but there is no any entry available in mac address table of switch for d mac address for destination mac address so in this scenario now switch don't have any option right to forward this frame to which computer so switch will forward switch will send one copy to all computer switch will forward one copy to all computer why because switch don't know what is the exit interface for destination mac address right every time switch will look up their mac address table to find exit interface of a device okay so when computer b will receive the frame it will see it will check what is destination mac, destination mac address in the frame in the packet so destination mac is d and my mac address is b so this 
this packet is not for me this traffic is not for me so this pc will discard it drop it in the same way this pc will also discard it but when pc d pc4 will receive it it will check what is destination mac destination mac is d and my mac address is also d that means someone have sent this packet to me for me this is for me so this pc will generate reply in the reply source ip will be 10.4 and destination ip will be 10.1 right source mac will be d and destination mac will be a after that this pc will forward this again traffic to switch now again switch we switch is receiving a frame on this port again switch will learn mac address first so again it will make one entry this time on 0 slash 4 port number a device is connected whose mac address is d because d is the source mac address in the traffic in the frame right then switch will check what is destination mac so destination mac is a Again, switch will look up their MAC address table, right, to find exit interface uh, of a MAC address. So this time, one entry is available here. You can see for a MAC address, exit interface is zero slash one. Means the device whose MAC address is a is connected on zero slash one interface. So this time, switch will forward uh, the frame from this interface only, right, from this interface only. So this is how these two users can communicate with each other. And next time, whenever these two users will communicate with each other. Switch will not forward one copy to all computer because now switch have MAC addresses of both device in their MAC address table with exit interface. So now switch will perform unicast communication between 10.1 and 10.4. In the same way, when switch will receive any frame from computer 2, it will learn B MAC address on 0 slash 2 interface. Whenever a switch will receive any frame on 0 slash 3 interface, it will learn C MAC address. Right, because in the frame source Mac will be C, source Mac will be B, right? Like this, which is going to perform unicast, unicasting. Okay. So first function of switch is learning source Mac address. Source Mac. Second function is forwarding traffic on the basis of destination Mac on the basis of destination MAC. So this is two important function of switch, packet forwarding and address learning. Let me perform on a small lab of uh, this, then we will move further. Let's say here I have one switch. And I have some computers. I'm going to change the MAC addresses of these device. I'm going to change MAC address of these devices. Let's say PC0 MAC address is this one, this one. But I am going to say PC0 MAC address is 000. Dot 000. Dot 000. A. Let's say this is MAC address of this PC. This is MAC address of this PC. Let me copy this MAC address and let me change MAC address of this PC also. This MAC, this PC MAC address is let's say B. PC 2, let's say this PC MAC address is C. And PC 3. That's a PC3 MAC address is 0D, right? I have changed the MAC address of all these devices, right? Now let me connect these devices through switch. Now these devices should be able to communicate with each other. These devices should be able to communicate with each other. So see guys, this switch is will learn MAC address of PC0 on which interface? on 0 slash 1 interface, right? Switch will learn MAC address of PC3 on which interface? 0 slash 4 interface. Switch will learn MAC address of PC1 on which interface? 0 slash 2 interface. And switch will learn MAC address of PC2 on which interface? On 0 slash 3 interface, right? So by default, for now, if you will check MAC address table of this switch, command is very simple to check MAC address table. You can run show MAC address table. Show MAC address table in the CLI. So here if I will run so MAC address table. 
you can see inside the mac at this table there is no any entry so it is going to you know maintain vlan information mac address type and port type and port type means host which have learned the mac address static or dynamic statically also we can configure mac address on interface after that there will be vlan information then mac address and then port right so now mac address table of this switch is empty because this switch have not received any frame on any interfaces now i am going to configure ip on pc0 let's say on pc0 i am going to assign one ip 10.0.0.1 and submit mask is 255.0.0.0 when we assign ip address on any devices first of all the device will check duplicacy right first of all the device will check duplicacy that is this ip address duplicate or not for that it will generate one grace csr packet and it will forward the grace csr packet to switch now on switch will learn receive grace csr packet on 0/1 interface it will learn source mac address of this machine so now if you will check mac address table of switch now you can see there is one entry right this is mac address of which device pc0 and switch have learned this mac address on which interface on 0/1 interface how switch have learned this mac address dynamically and this interface is member of which vlan vlan1 by default all interfaces are in vlan1 right in the same way whenever switch will receive traffic on 0/2 it will learn mac address 0/3 it will learn mac address 0/4 it will learn mac address so let me configure ip on all devices here here also i am going to assign 10.1.1.2 let's say so now see there will be two entry you can see there is two entry right because i am assigning ip address and pc is generating graces are to check duplicate ip address graces are packet and it is forwarding to switch and switch is learning mac address right so it have learned mac address of pc 1 on 0/2 because pc 1 is connected on 0/2 interface in the same way when i will assign ip on pc 2 pc 2 3 it will learn mac address of pc 3 also see three entries are there when i will configure ip on pc 3 10.1.1.4 see the mac address right any question guys please let me know in chat no question okay let me move further now here i can clear the mac address table of this switch i can clear mac clear mac address table dynamically so this command will clear all the mac addresses which switch have learned dynamically now again if i will check so mac address table you can see there is no any entry again mac address table is empty so now when we will send traffic manually then switch will learn mac address right so let's say if 10.1 want to communicate with let me open simulation mode as well so that i can show you packet see whenever 10.1 want to 10.1 want to communicate with let's say 10.4 so let me open cmd and here ping 10.1.1.4 right see it have generated the traffic it will forward the traffic to switch and switch will do what this is unknown unicast flooding this is unknown unicast flooding see these devices are dropping the traffic and only this device have accept the traffic why because in the traffic destination mac is you can see destination mac is what destination mac is d right so d is the mac address of pc3 and now if you will check mac address table so you can see switch have learned the mac address of pc0 on 0/1 interface because this switch have received one traffic on this interface with source mac address a right now when pc3 will give reply again switch will receive traffic from pc3 so this time you can see the mac address table switch have learned mac address of pc4 also okay in pc mac address not complete guys you can't change mac address but this is simulation software here we can configure mac address right sir is there no need to ping without icmp packet switch will learn mac address 
until and unless switch will not receive frame on the interface which will not learn mac address on switch will receive frame on the interface it will learn mac address right and manually also we can make entry like see on this switch on this switch switch have learn this mac address dynamically right dynamically so let me copy this mac address and i am going to configure this mac address statically say mac address table and address mac address table static then mac address so this is mac address i want to find this mac address on which interface in which vlan vlan 1 let's say and then on which interface so interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 right so this is a static entry so mac address table now you can see method is type is static for dynamic entry there is one mac aging right after 300 seconds which will flush dynamic entry but a static entry will be permanently there a static entry will be permanently there no mac address was not there in the table now of pc3 that's why switch have perform see if pc now now mac addresses are there in the mac address table of pc0 and pc4 so this time if pc0 will communicate with pc3 it will not forward packet to all machine you can see switch have received the traffic and it will forward to pc3 only why because mac address is there in the mac address table of switch but again if i will clear mac address table clear mac address table dynamic right now so mac address table so mac address table you can see there is only one entry a static entry right dynamic entry is removed again if pc0 will pin to pc4 it will forward one copy to all machine it have received the traffic and see it is forwarding to all again next time it will not forward the traffic to all machine right again it will not for next time it will not forward traffic to all machine because it have no mac address see but from pc0 if i will pin to pc1 so again switch will perform a non unique threading it will forward one copy to all other pcs because this time switch don't know what is uh, what is the mac address of pc1 pc1 mac address is still unknown i'm not getting voice guys am i audible get my point so this is guys mac address table here as i told you that the switch is going to remove dynamic entry after mac aging time that is by default 300 second switch see on switch i can run this command so mac address table aging time okay so in packet tracer we cannot run this command but in you know uh, real devices here we can run that command we can check aging time also so by default aging time is 300 second means after 300 second switch is going to flush dynamic entry on a particular interface i want to check mac address what is mac address on 0 slash 1 that also i can check i can use this command so mac address table interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 show me the mac address which you have learned on 0 slash 1 interface only right or i can say show mac address table static show me only a static entry show me only dynamic entry right show me a static entry interface and dynamic entry but on real devices with the help of address also you can find interface if i will show you it in same topology in evng let me do one thing let me design top this topology in evng just to show you some more commands and guys today is last lecture of free session right now if 
you will enroll in paid course definitely you will learn these all topics in detail you will learn these all topics in detail right as i told you we will have around five classes on one routing protocol like ospr for eigrp so in your entire life you don't need to learn any routing and switching protocols again if you will enroll in paid batch right so this is last session of ccna free course right today i will try to cover most topics of CC switching right so i think now my evng will work fine and here you have one link to share your review regarding training so guys if you are learning right you should share your review it will help others to get to know about the training right so here if i will you know open any topology let's say this topology let's say this topology in this topology let me turn on these devices and let me show you some extra commands fine enable so mac address table so mac address table of this switch is empty so mac address table aging time here i can run this command you can see what is mac aging time by default 300 second 300 second so after 300 second this switch will flush dynamic entry it will flush dynamic entry now switch have not learned any mac address here so let me do one thing let me send some traffic from this pc so that switch can learn mac address so what i need to do only i need to configure ip here 10.1.1.1 slash 24 so once i will assign ip it is checking duplicacy by generating gracia sarp and now if you will check mac address table of this switch so you can see there is one entry there is one entry this is mac address of pc which is connected on 0 slash 1 interface and how this switch have learned it dynamically and so mac address table is in time you can see 300 seconds but we can change this timer right and so mac address table and after that put question mark here you can see with the help of address also we can find if i want to find that this mac address mac address of pc1 is this one where is mac address of pc1 this is this is mac address of pc which is connected on 0 slash 1 interface so i want to know switch have learned this mac address on which interface so here i can say so mac address table and then address then address wait wait there's some here i need to say address and after that put address now see it's showing me that switch have learned this mac address on zero slash one interface and how switch have learned this mac address dynamically and this interface is member of which vlan vlan one right then so mac address table and again put question mark here you can see there are lots of option right like count i can check this switch can learn how many mac addresses so this can this switch can learn see how many mac addresses and how many total number of mac addresses are there four here is my point four mac addresses are there na? so total number of mac address for this is four right then so mac address table we can you know check dynamic entry we can check what a static entry so there is no any static mac address then we can put interface like interface e0 slash 1 show me the mac address on e0 slash 1 only right then we can say so mac address vlan 1 show me the mac address of vlan 1 so me the mac address of vlan 10 so there is no any mac switch have not learned any mac address in vlan 10 right so we have multiple options on real devices
okay if you want to change mac as in time like right? let's say i want switch suit plus dynamic entry after 10 seconds so what i can do here i can run mac address table mac address table is in time and let's say 100 second now so mac address is in time you can see now mac is in time is what 100 second for a particular vlan also you can change mac as in time let's say mac address table is in time 100 second or 1000 second for a particular vlan vlan 10 so this command will set 1000 second mac is in time for particular vlan that is vlan 10 okay now here we have some more option as well mac address table and put question mark you can change mac is in time here you can use a static method like you can bind a static mac address on an interface so these are mac address table okay now next topic in switching is vlan next topic in switching is vlan so see guys why we come up with vlan concept this is my switch I have some user here still not clear why switch have sent first packet then I'm like, guys let's suppose you know uh, I am here okay and I'm here okay and someone is asking you know uh, one way let, let's say way to you know uh, reach Mumbai or reach Delhi for any location right and I have some path right from here I have some roads right so I can either send him to this road towards this road towards this road but if I don't know which roads is going toward Delhi which road is going toward Delhi then what I will do I will tell him to go on which each path if I am switch, I will forward him to each path, to each path. Like same, I have one switch here and this switch have some computer. This computer MAC address is A, this computer MAC address is B, this computer MAC address is C. If computer A want to reach computer C, right? So computer will forward traffic to switch, switch will check. First source MAC, it will learn source MAC, then it will check destination. What is destination C? So switch will check their table. Am I know what is the exit interface for C device? If I know, then definitely I will forward to C computer only. If I don't know, then I have to forward one copy to all computer, right? Let's say in a classroom, there are 40 students or 50 students, right? One student's name is Ramesh. One student name is Ramesh. And principal told me to call Ramesh, right? And you don't know who is Ramesh. So what you will do, you will broadcast it. In the class, you will broadcast who is Ramesh principal is calling but if you know who is Ramesh then you can slowly go to Ramesh and then you can tell Ramesh sir is calling to you principal is calling to you getting my point if you know the Ramesh you can do unicast if you don't know the Ramesh you have to do broadcast in the classroom so that's why switch send first packet to their all interface except receiving interface because switch don't have knowledge about the exit interface of destination device. Getting my point. This is the reason. Clear now? Okay, great. Now next is, next concept is VLAN. So let me start VLAN here. I was explaining VLAN, but okay, no problem. Let me design one topology. This is my switch and I have some computer. D. Okay. Now, as you know, switch maintain what MAC address table. So switch is going to maintain MAC address table. Switch will learn MAC address of these devices on interfaces. Let's say this is 0 slash 1 interface. This is 0 slash 2 interface. 
this is 0 slash 3 interface and this one is 0 slash 4 interface 4 interface by default all interfaces belongs to single vlan vlan 1 these all interfaces are in vlan 1 are in vlan 1 one now just think computer a want to communicate with computer d so source mac will be a and destination mac will be d destination mac will be d this pc will forward this frame to switch switch will learn mac address source mac address on 0 slash 1 it will make one entry in their mac address table on 0 slash 1 interface one device is connected whose mac address is a now switch is going to check what destination mac destination mac is what d so there is no any entry available in mac address table for d so switch will forward one copy from their all interface one copy from this interface one copy from this interface and one copy from this interface you know let's say thousands of devices are connected on this switch or maybe this switch is connected with another device another switch another switch and on another switch also we have lots of user we have 100 number of user on this switch we have 100 number of user on switch one and we have 100 number of user on switch number two so switch is going to forward one copy of frame to 100 user on switch number one as well as on switch number two as well and on switch number two because switch one will forward one copy to switch two also and switch two will also forward one copy to all devices this is why because all interfaces are in VLAN 1 by default means all PCs belongs to single VLAN all PCs belongs to single VLAN that's why switch is performing a non unicast fitting or it is sending one copy of frame to each PC so this is problem if my broadcast network is large right let's say in my network there are lots of switches and lots of end devices so whenever switch will forward unknown if switch will perform a non unicast threading means whenever switch don't know what is the exit interface for destination mac all machines will receive one copy one copy right so to reduce the this problem to avoid this problem we come up with vlan concept we come up with vlan concept with the vlan with the help of vlan we can divide the broadcast domain we can divide the broadcast domain so with the help of vlan guide guys what i can do here see with the help of vlan i will put these two interfaces in different vlan and these two interfaces in different vlan these two interface in different vlan now again pc1 want to communicate with pc b pc is source a destination b PC will forward frame to switch. Switch will learn source MAC address on 0 slash 1 interface. A, it will check what is destination MAC. B, there is if there is no entry available in MAC address table, then it will perform a non unicast threading. Means it will forward one copy to all other device, but in the same VLAN. That means this time, this switch is going to forward one copy to PC2 only. Right? In the same VLAN, it will perform a non unicast threading. It will not forward one copy to PC3 and one copy to PCD. Right? So to reduce broadcast domain or to reduce a non-unicast flooding, we come up with concept of VLAN. Now, if someone will ask you what is VLAN, someone will ask you what is VLAN. So VLAN is, is used to divide or we can say break broadcast domain very simple very simple right now how to create vlan simply you can run command vlan and then vlan id 10 right exit then i want to let's say put interface f0 slash 1 in vlan 10 so here i will run command switch port access vlan 10 right once i will hit enter this port will enter in vlan 10 this port will enter in vlan 10 at layer 2 at layer 2 
now we are talking about layer 2 forwarding right at layer 2 it, it will it is used to break broadcast domain at layer 2 so here on switch number 1 let's say i want to create some vlan by default see so vlan brief all interfaces are in which vlan by default in vlan 1 this is by default vlan default vlan right and these vlan are reserved we are you know not allowed to use these vlan and these vlans are not for us we don't need to learn these vlan so i want to create vlan 10 over here what i will do simply i will run command vlan 10 and then we can define name also let's say sales exit now so vlan brief so we have one vlan vlan 10 whose name is sales but there is no any interface in vlan 10 so let's say i want to put interface e 0 slash 1 in vlan 10 so i will run command e 0 slash 1 interface e 0 slash 1 and switch port access vlan 10 this command will put 0 slash 1 interface in vlan 10 so vlan brief now you can see this interface is in which vlan in vlan 10 right in the same way i want to create vlan 20 over here so vlan 20 exit then interface e 0 slash 2 let's say i want to put this interface in vlan 20 so switch port access vlan 20 exit exit so vlan brief see this interface is in vlan 20 and this interface is in vlan 10 and by default two different vlan cannot communicate with each other by default two different vlan cannot communicate with each other so to make communication possible between vlan 10 and vlan 20 here you have to create svi switch virtual interface vlan break layer 2 broadcast domain okay so on this switch let's say i want to you know for now here on pc5 ip address is 10.1 let's say on pc6 i am going to define ip 20.1 so at layer 3 also both are in different broadcast domain at layer 2 also both are in different vlan uh, different broadcast domain so right so pc5 cannot ping to pc6 from pc5 if i will ping 20.1.1.1 see ping is not working no default gateway so say ip 10.1.1.1 slash 24 and 10.1.1.100 this is gateway on pc number six also say ip 20.1.1.1 slash 24 and 20.1.1.100 this is gateway and now on switch i can create svi config t interface vlan 10 ip address 10.1.1.1 100 255.255.255.0 exit interface vlan 20 ip address 20 dot 20 dot 1 dot 1 dot 100 255 255 255 dot 0 exit do so ip route actually we need to run no set command on both vlan interface say no set here and on interface vlan 20 also say no such so ip route right and now pc5 can ping to pc6 now these two devices can communicate with each other ping 20.1.1.1 see ping is working now sorry from pc number 5 okay now let's say here i have two switch switch one switch two on switch one i have two user one is in vlan 10 and one is in vlan 20. on switch number two also i have two user one in vlan 10 and one 
is in VLAN 20. Switch 1, switch 2. This interface is in VLAN 10. This interface is in VLAN 20. This interface is in VLAN 10. And this interface is in VLAN 20. MAC address A, B, C, D. Now guys, if I want to make communication between computer A to C, both are in VLAN 10. So here between switch 1 and switch 2, I have to connect one link and I have to put this interface is in which VLAN? In VLAN 10. And this interface should be also in which VLAN? In VLAN 10. Now VLAN 10 user can communicate with each other. Right, but VLAN 20 user cannot communicate with each other. So for VLAN 20, again, I need to connect one link, right? I will put this interface in VLAN 20 and this interface in VLAN 20, right? Now VLAN 20 user can also communicate with each other. So like this, let's say on switch number one, we have 20 number of VLANs and on switch number two also we have 20 number of VLANs. So how many links I need to connect between switch one and switch two? 20, one for each VLAN, which is not practically, which is not practical, right? I cannot connect 20 number of link between switch one and switch two. Let's say on this switch we have 48 ports. On this switch also we have 48 ports. So if I will connect 20 link between switch one and switch two, that means we will have how many free ports? Only 28, means I can connect only 28 computer together. So what I will do in this scenario? In this scenario, I need to connect only one link. I need to connect only one link between switch one and switch two, only one link. And this link should be trunk. Because there are two types of switch port. Switch port means port which forward traffic on the basis of layer 2. Port which can forward traffic on the basis of layer 2 is known as switch port. And there are two types of switch port. First one is switch port. First one is access port. Second one is trunk port. trunk port. Access port is the port which is member of single VLAN. Like you can see this port. This port is access port because this port is member of single VLAN and trunk port is the port which is member of all VLANs or you can say multiple VLAN. Access port is the port which is member of single VLAN and trunk port is the port which is member of all VLAN. So if I will configure this interface, this link as a trunk link. So now this link is a part of all VLAN, right? Miss this port, this link can carry traffic of VLAN 10 also and traffic of VLAN 20 also, right? So through this single link, VLAN 10 user and VLAN 20, both user can communicate. Okay. And to configure trunk, you can see by default. So interface trunk. So here we don't have any trunk link. Right. So to configure trunk link, see E0 slash 0, which is connected to switch 2 should be trunk, right? Link between switches should be trunk and link which is connected with end devices should be access. So interface E0 slash 0, this interface should be trunk. So here I can run command switch port mode trunk. But before configuring switch port mode trunk, you have to define encapsulation protocol. You have to define encapsulation protocol, switch port trunk encapsulation. And we have again two types of encapsulation protocol. One is dot one Q, another one is ISL. So here I can say, let's say dot one Q. Actually this port is for tagging guys. See in this scenario, if switch one is going to forward traffic of VLAN 10 from this trunk link, 
let's say it have for what traffic where source is a destination is c this is traffic of which vlan vlan 10 so switch will switch one will forward it from trunk link how switch two will came to know that this is a traffic of vlan 10 so because of that whenever a switch forward traffic on trunk link it will add one tag number in the tag number it will put vlan id so with the actual packet it will add one tag with vlan id 10 so switch when switch will receive any traffic on trunk link first of all switch will check tag number tag number is 10 that means it is the traffic of vlan 10 so switch 2 will forward it from this interface to this pc okay so for this tagging we have two protocol for the tagging we have two protocol one is isl and another one is dot 1q isl is cisco proprietary protocol dot 1q is open standard protocol right isl we can configure isl only on cisco devices and we can configure dot 1q on cisco devices as well as on non cisco devices nowadays cisco is also using dot 1q protocol isl is not in huge but still you have option to configure right so here on switch i have defined encapsulation protocol dot 1q and now i can run switch port mode trunk command and now if you will verify so interface trunk so you can see e0 slash 0 is trunk right and how many vlans are allowed on this interface all vlans are allowed on this interface okay so this is concept of trunking we configure this link as trunk so that this link can carry traffic of both vlan vlan 10 and 20 vlan 10 and 20 in the same way on switch number two also i have to run switch port mode trunk command on e0 slash 0 interface e0 slash 0 switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q trunk encapsulation dot 1q and switch port mode trunk so interface trunk so now link between switch 1 and switch 2 is trunk now it can carry traffic of all vlan by default but if you want to exclude some vlan on this interface on the trunk link you can like let's say i don't want to allow vlan 50 on this trunk link so interface e0 slash 0 switch port trunk a lot vlan remove vlan and then remove 50 so interface trunk now you can see a lot vlan on this trunk link is 1249 and 5124094 i want to allow only vlan 10 and 20 so that so also we can configure e0 slash 0 switch port trunk a lot vlan 10 and 20 now only vlan 10 and 20 are allowed on this trunk link so interface trunk you can see switch port trunk allowed vlan 10 20 next what is fddi token ring these are different technology nowadays we are not using token ring technology right earlier we were using why encapsulation required encapsulation is required see here i have explained it also but let me explain it again switch one switch two here i have one user in vlan 10 i have one user in vlan 20 here i have one user in vlan 10 and one user in vlan 20 link between switch one and switch two is trunk this link is trunk so whenever switch switch one will forward traffic of vlan 10 from the trunk link how switch two will came to know that this is a traffic of vlan 10 
or this is a traffic of VLAN 20 or this is a traffic of VLAN 30, right? That's why we come up with encapsulation method that whenever switch will forward traffic from the trunk link, it will add one tag number. It will add one tag number. So when switch need to forward traffic of VLAN 10 from the trunk link, it will add tag number 10. And when switch 2 will receive it, it will check this tag number, right? Tag number in tag value is 10. That means this is the traffic of VLAN 10. This is how switch 2 can, switch 2 can get to know about the VLAN ID. Now guys, by default, one protocol is running on switch. That is very important protocol, STP. STP stands for a spanning tree protocol. A spanning tree protocol. See, by default, this protocol is enabled on switches. Here you can see. So, a spanning tree. See, a spanning tree is by default running. Here, first of all, I am going to say no VLAN 2 to 100. I have removed all VLANs. On switch number 2 also, I am going to say no VLAN 2 to 100, let's say. This is client mode switch, switch port. Okay, on this switch also, so a spanning tree. So a spanning tree is by default enabled. Now try to understand first why we come up with a spanning tree protocol. Why we come up with a spanning tree protocol. For that guys, let me design one topology here. Switch one, switch two, and switch three. Let's say I have three switches. Switch three. Let's say here I have one computer and here I have one computer. This computer MAC address is A, this computer MAC address is B, this computer IP address is 10.1.1. Let's say one, this computer IP address is 10.1.1. .1 .1 then now see in this scenario when 10.1 will ping 20.1 when 10.1 will ping 20.1 source ip will be 10.1 destination ip will be 10.2 source mac will be a destination mac will be what b right these link are trunk 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 let's say this is 0 slash 1 this is 0 slash 2 this is 0 slash 1 this is 0 slash 2 this is 0 slash 1 this is 0 slash 2 fine this is 0 slash 3 and this is also 0 slash 3 now when this pc will forward this frame to switch 2 first of all switch 2 will do what switch 2 will learn mac address of pc a it will learn a mac address on 0 slash three interface, right? After that, this switch will check what? Destination MAC. So destination MAC is what? B, let's say entry is not there for destination MAC, right? In the MAC address table of switch two. Then switch two will forward one copy of frame to switch number one also, and one copy of frame to switch number three also, right? Okay. When switch three will receive frame on this interface, switch three will learn a MAC address a MAC address on which interface? 0 slash 1 interface. After that, switch 3 is going to check what? Destination MAC. Destination MAC is B. If entry is not there, switch will forward one copy to switch 1. Now, earlier switch 1 was learning a MAC address on 0 slash 
one interface and now switch is learning a mac address on which interface 0 slash 2 interface right because switch 3 is also forwarding same frame to switch number 1 so what switch 1 will do switch 1 will remove this entry plus this entry and it will make new entry in their mac address table right after that again switch 1 will forward that copy to switch number 2 now see switch 2 will again learn same mac address a mac address on the which interface on 0 slash one interface it will remove this entry it will make new entry it will make new entry and after that switch 2 will forward this to switch number 3 again switch 3 will learn mac address a mac address on which interface 0 slash 1 and switch 1 will also forward frame to switch number 3 so it will learn mac address on 0 slash 3 also 0 slash now it is learning on 0 slash 1 again so this is what this is what th what is happening this is mac flapping right mac address in the mac address table of all switches are flapping are flapping right so this is loop this is what loop hybrid port i don't know guys what is hybrid port i don't know what is hybrid port Okay. STP, what is STP? STP is a layer 2 protocol which is used to avoid this loop. Which is used to avoid this loop. First try to understand how loop can form in the topology. First try to understand how loop can form in the topology. Then we will talk about a spanning tree protocol. Because a spanning tree protocol is yeah, definitely. Or let's say, okay, B will generate reply. B will generate reply. Let's say this PC is pinging uh, to 10 dot one dot one dot one hundred, which is not exist. Again, my traffic will be flowing between these switches, right? So let me show you. See how loop can form in the topology in packet tracer. Let me design one topology in loop. Loop will form only in that scenario when we have, when we will have redundancy, when we will have redundant path. Let's say switch one, switch two, and switch three. By default, a spanning tree protocol is running because of that loop will not form. So I am going to disable a spanning tree protocol on all switches. See, this port is block. This port is block because of a spanning tree protocol. But if I will disable a spanning tree protocol on this switch, let me run this command here. Config T, no spanning tree for VLAN 1. Right? So you can see now both port of this switch is in forwarding state. On switch 3, we have one port block. We have one block port on switch number 3. So on switch number 3 also, I am going to say no spanning tree for VLAN 1 because we have only VLAN 1 here. Now, blocking port is on switch number 2. On switch number 2 also, I am going to disable a spanning tree protocol. No spanning tree for VLAN 1. Now, you can see all ports are in forwarding state, right? All ports are in forwarding state. All ports are in forwarding state and a spanning tree protocol is disabled. So, a spanning tree. Now you can see no a spanning tree instances exist. No a spanning tree instance exist. So, if I will connect one computer here, if I will connect one computer here, and if this computer will generate a broadcast, when I will configure IP address, definitely this computer will generate broadcast. And once this computer will send broadcast to switch, you will see loop will form in the topology. All ports will start blinking. You can see all ports are blinking now. All ports are blinking. Why? Because now we have loop in the topology. Here if I will check MAC address table of the switch. So MAC address table. You can see switch is learning MAC address. Switch have learned MAC address of PC4. Let me check what is the MAC address of PC4. PC4 MAC address is in last it's 6, E6. Okay, E6. So see on this switch. 
E6 MACADES is here. Switch have learned E6 MACADES on 0 slash 2 port number. On 0 slash 2 port number, it have learned this MACADES E06. After some time, after some time, you will see it will learn same MAC address on E0 slash 1 interface. Now you can see this MAC address is on 0 slash 1. Earlier this MAC address was on 0 slash 2. Again, after some time, you will see this MAC address is on 0 slash 2 interface. So MAC address is flapping over here, right? This MAC address is flapping between port 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2. So to avoid this loop, we come up with protocol called STP, a spanning tree protocol. STP, a spanning tree protocol. Now, any question? Any question till here? If you have understood how loop can form in the topology, then only you can understand the requirement of a spanning tree protocol. And a spanning tree protocol is very important, guys, in the network. That's why it is by default enable. That's why it is by default enable. Otherwise, whenever you will, you know, uh, connect switches in loop, automatically loop will form there. Whenever any machine will generate broadcast message. That's why we come up with a spanning tree protocol. A spanning tree protocol. Now, let's say this is not my scenario. Let's say my scenario is this one. This is last topic. Here, I need more bandwidth between switch 1 and switch 2. I need more bandwidth between switch 1 and switch 2. Let's say here I have one server and my outside users Outside users are accessing this server sometime because of bandwidth between switch 1 and switch 2. Less bandwidth between switch 1 and switch 2. Some users are facing slowness. Okay. What will be the problem? Okay. Probably you will have, you know, less bandwidth there. Network performance will, you know, slow automatically. Congestion will start there. Lots of problem will, you know, rise because of loop. Unnecessary traffic is flowing on the link. Link, we are you connect. We have connect link between switch one and switch two to forward the traffic of user, not to forward you know unnecessary traffic of loop. So it will reduce network performance. It can increase network congestion here, right? So in this scenario, let's say switch five is connected with one router, and that router is connected with ISP. Right, and my outside user are accessing this server every day. Right, sometimes they are facing slowness because of less bandwidth between switch four and switch five. Right, so I need to connect one more link between switch one and switch five, switch four and switch five. But here, a spanning tree protocol will block one link. A spanning tree protocol will block one link to avoid loop. Then how I can utilize these both link? So we come up with concept of ether channel. We come up with concept of ether channel. So now question is what is ether channel? So ether channel is used to ether channel is used to bundle multiple physical link into single logical link. It is used to bundle multiple physical link into single logical link. With the help of ether channel, if I will bundle these two link, right, then a spanning tree protocol will work on that logical link, not on the physical link, so that we can utilize both link between switch 4 and switch 5. So see how to configure ether channel on switch number 4. First, I am going to configure ether channel. Then I will configure on switch number five also. Enable config T. And now you can see so a spanning tree protocol. Here we are able to see E F0 slash three interfaces block. Zero slash three interfaces block. Right? So we cannot use E0 slash three to forward user data. 
but if I will bundle these two link with the help of ether channel, then I can utilize both. So interface range E zero slash one, sorry, not E F and F zero slash three. And here I can say channel. First of all, I should down the interface, shut down, and then I should run command. Port. Command is channel group. Channel group, then group number. Let's say group number is 10 and then mode. Okay, we can use, you know, this is limitation in packet tracer. We can use group range from one to six only. So let's say group range, group number is five and then mode is, let's say on. And then say no set, right? So ether channel summary. You can see I have created one port channel, group number five. And in this group, I have bundle these two interface 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 3. We'll do same thing on switch number 5 also. Interface range F 0 slash 0 and F 0 slash 3. Oh, sorry, 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 3. Then channel group number 5 mode on. And then say no set. So ether channel summary. Here also you can see I have one port channel number 5 and I have bundled these two interfaces, right? And now soon both ports will come in forwarding a state. Now you can see. Both port on switch number three is in forwarding state. Both port on switch number four is in forwarding state. So with the help of ether channel, we can utilize both link between switch four and switch five, right? This is why we come up with ether channel. Any question? So I have just given you guys, you know, overview of, you know, basic proto switching protocols here. In you know, uh, the upcoming batch, definitely we are going to learn these protocols in detail, right? We will discuss each and every point very carefully so that I can prepare you guys for the interview. I can prepare you guys for the exam, right? Even you can go for CCNA exam, for CCNP exam, for interview, right? Everywhere, anywhere you can use these knowledge. Hello, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Today is last day of CCNA basic training. And uh, next week we'll start a uh, deep drive training with Proful sir and Vijay sir. So thanks everyone. And next week we'll start issuing CCNA basic certificate. I request everyone to please just do a form of quiz actually. Next week we are sending a quiz. And please do give the feedback, feedback to the Proful sir and the pre booking also. I'm just sending one second to the pre booking form and and give some feedback to the profile, sir. He does very good job. Okay, guys, any query you have? Guys, you have any query? Actually, we'll provide a one year rack session also on EVNG platform with preloaded labs. The profile will provide that as a lab, so we'll upload to the R rack, CDP rack. So, any query regarding for the lecture? The profile, sir, will provide you in the group. Profile, can you just provide all CD, all PDF file in the group? Yeah, he, he will send in the group. Don't worry. Sure, sure. I will. I will share one book for CCN exam also. Okay. Apart from that, any any query? Sir, any practical is there for practical. us? Yeah. Practical will be there on EVNG lab. We'll provide a rack session to the customer who done the booking of deep drive. So we'll give the one year rack session. So for free session, do we need to charge for that one? Uh, give the charges for that one for the lab. 
that's a full training basically we are provided only basic training now the deep drive training will be starting in the next week or, or next week or day after next week or second week basically the rack session is a 24 by 7 access on 365 days we'll provide over a vpn hi i have a question i'm located in new york city so yeah. with the lecture how does it work is it uh, on a self um pace way or there's a lecture section that will be going on with the Live. paid um subscription proful can you answer to the abu bakkar Yeah, yeah, all session will be live, brother. We will meet live for two hour every day, and every day we will cover you know at least one to two critical topics, right? Every day you will measure improvement in your technical skill, right? That is my promise. And uh, after the lecture, you will get recording also. Maybe sometime if you will miss the live session, you will have recording. You will have you know notes, premium notes with lab, and you need to perform lab by watching the video or by following the notes. and what time will the lectures be a timing will be i think same sir yeah is based on the voting actually based on maximum votes we will perform voting for that for timing okay thank you so i shared you the pre booking form also for job actually we are sending a whatever jobs is coming in the nokri and linkedin so we'll we'll forward to the our paid group so we are having a telegram and and whatsapp group we'll send a job job requirement over there I filled out the um, pre-booking because I wanted to do the three CCNA, Juniper, and uh, Palo Alto. Okay, cool, Abu Bakar. We'll actually will contact you. Yeah, I feel it already. Thanks, Abu Bakar. Anybody else have any question? Sir, is there anything for CCNP? Is there any planning for CCNP yes. for the coming yeah, yes. future? Yeah, in in Jan actually we are starting that that uh, Encore and uh, ESNRS also. will do that is there do you have to do like the ccna before you are allowed to do the ccnp or how does that work also can you, you can, can go for that. ccnp also but you know ccna is recommendation for any other technology even you uh, you want to learn sd wan cloud you know aws cyber security for any other technology you have to understand ccna first ccna is like entry gate right after completion of ccna you can go for ccnp you can go for security and for any other technology right so it's my recommendation if anyone who don't have knowledge of ccna and you, if you are thinking to join ccnp batch so this is not going to be good for you right first you should go for ccna and then only you should go for any other technology okay hello for me it's more like i wanted to do more of hands on i have ccna uh, ccnp certification for encore so i was looking for something where i can do more hands on lab to uh, get more understanding in paid batch you will perform one lab every day at least one lab right every day let's say we have a protocol osp app so in osp app we will have more than 20 labs right so he, he, getting ccnp certification you know is going to be very easy for you after completion of training like if you will complete ccnp training after completion of your ccna live ccna training you you okay. can easily go for ccna exam and you can pass the exam right same things for ccnp also yeah tom any question you have hello yes i have some question yeah tell me yeah i wanted i wanted to know really i'm very interested in the course but my problem is now the problem of payment how can i make the payment really okay so don't worry if you are supporting a paypal in your country you can send via paypal if you are having a western money over upi you can send that thing also so payment no. will discuss on during a one to one session yeah on the chat so a sales guy will check contact you regarding for the payment okay okay it's okay it's okay thank you yeah thanks anybody has a question so i'll otherwise we'll close the session and we'll pro we'll upload a recorded session on the youtube So, a deep drive training will be for uh, daily basis or weekend one. It's both options are there daily and weekend both. Depend on the number of candidates are there in weekend week weekend week weekend. Okay, so how can I connect uh, for this uh, this one? So Why anybody will connect me or yeah. what? If you fill a registration form, I send you a registration yeah. form. You to get a okay. registration form. 
If fillers will available directly, our sales team will contact you. Sure. So for CCLP, uh, in the mid, as you said, the January. So in the uh, first of January or what you are planning to do that? that will be a second week of Jan. The, we are looking for at least five candidates to start the batch. If, if you can provide a four to five candidates, we can start a CCNP batch also. As of now, we haven't announced yet. But if somebody having a requirement of CCNP, they are having a four to five guys. They are ready for joint. So we can start CCNP also. So what will be the charges for that one? A uh, ten thousand each paper. Basically, two papers in the CCNP. One okay. is the uh, SR or second one is uh, Encore. Okay. I think, Praful, I think we are thanks for your conducting a training. I think they are very happy and for getting a thanks training. Thanks a lot, Praful, sir. Thanks for your uh, nice, wonderful training. Thank so you. So we'll meet in the paid batch with Praful, sir, next week or day up, up, after the next, first or second week, depending on the candidate count, we'll start the batch. Okay.